What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we saw a strong rejection at resistance as we're printing very bearish engulfing daily candles. It's going to be another critical test of very critical support levels. So first up let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right, so today on SPY we were down one and a half percent and we're right back down to this critical support level at 438 and the critical level that we need to hold above for any hopes of a bull market is going to be down here at 433.5. So remember, we were getting very close to getting some confirmation of that bounce off support, but we did need to close above SPY 450. And as you can tell, there was a very strong rejection from that resistance. And we have a very bearish engulfing candle on the daily chart coming all the way back down to support. So if you look at this move in the lens of a one day move, we went all the way from 450 down to 438 in a single day. So that is an extremely volatile day. And there was a lot of sellers with no buyers at any of those support levels. So that's something you don't want to completely ignore. Now, at the same time, every time we get near these critical support levels at 438 and 433.5, you don't want to become overly bearish because as you can tell, we continue to see strong bounces off of these support levels. So you really don't want to be trying to short the market at support. If you wanted to short this market, you should be setting your risk at resistance, which was around here at 448 to 450. That was a great short trade if you took it and you had a great risk level. But if you're trying to short down here at support, you don't have a great risk level to set at. So you need to be very cautious if you're shorting near support. So the market is going to be looking a lot more bearish if SPY starts breaking below 433. So watch that as a very critical support level. Now, don't forget, there's still the possibility if we do go to 433 or bounce off 438, that we still do have a valid zigzag pattern that could take SPY to retest all time highs. So this is really not the time to be getting overly bearish. The time to be getting bearish is if we slice down through support, test that level as resistance and get rejected and continue lower. That is your opportunity to take advantage of the weak market. So anytime you lose a support level, you're looking for a rejection of that level as resistance to confirm that you have a weak market that is heading lower. And that also allows you to set up the proper risk reward short trade. So just in the other direction, if we start bouncing off support, that is an opportunity for you to take some risk to the long side, knowing your risk is below support. And then you know exactly where your resistance is going to be for either take profit or rejection tells you you need to get out before you go right back down and lose all your profits. So in a volatile market, make sure you have a very clear trading plan. And it really shouldn't matter with this much volatility if you're taking short trades or long trades. As long as you're using proper risk management and you know your critical levels, you should be doing just fine. If you're getting greedy and you're trying to swing trade in either direction, this market is going to tear you up because it's very volatile and it continues to be a whipsaw. So if you're looking for more macro level views, you're getting a lot more bearish below 433 and a lot more bullish above 450. And it's just a trading range between those two levels. Now on a smaller scale, we still do have resistance at the 50 EMA at 440 and we will be looking a lot more bullish if we can get back over that level but you really shouldn't be expecting it to happen after such a bearish looking candle wait for the price action to confirm it hopefully by now you're learning what it means to follow price action because if you know your critical levels and you're following price action at those levels you should know which trade entries you should be taking and you should be setting up decent risk reward trades so watch these critical levels at 438 and 433 and if we break below that we still do have very strong support at 428 but the market will be looking a lot weaker and definitely a lot more bearish if we start breaking above 444 you're still looking for resistance around 448 and the bullish breakout of confirmation of the zigzag pattern will be the close above 450. jumping over to the nasdaq 100 triple q's you can see we were down 2.07 percent today and just like spy we had a very volatile day getting rejected all the way from resistance at 347 all the way down to our very critical support down here at 334. now remember the triple q's are a lot weaker than the rest of the market and i did tell you if the triple q's start closing below 334 it is highly likely you're going to see the bear market scenario so at this point in the triple q's you're going to know very soon if it's heading into a bear market or if it's going to start getting a very impulsive bounce off of the support level and start blasting through resistance. Now it is very likely even in a bear market scenario, we need a counter trend rally from this sell off and then we could roll over and get rejected at a higher resistance level around 357 and still go enter that bear market scenario. So there's nothing that's a guarantee in the stock market. And even though we are getting bearish price action, we are sitting at very critical support, which could lead to a bounce. Obviously, this bounce doesn't have to go all the way up to 357. It could get a retest of 347 and still get a rejection and head lower. 
So at this point, you need to be very cautious because we are sitting at the last line of defense for the bulls and the triple Qs at this level at 334. And if that level breaks down, you are looking for a very quick chip down to these lows to retest right around 318. We still do have the gap to fill at 315, so that's another valid price target if we start to close below 334. Now, anytime we're above 334, you need to be a lot more cautious of another rally because we still do have the possibility we could rip through resistance and continue to trend higher. So you need to be getting a lot more bullish if we start closing above 347 and 357. As long as we're below 347, it's likely we're going to have more downside. And if we break 347, we still have very strong resistance right around 357. So watch those two very critical resistance levels. And don't forget, we still do have resistance right around 351, where our 50 EMA and our 20 simple moving average are. And do notice that all of our moving averages are negatively sloping. So if the bulls can't bounce and break above resistance in the very near future, we are going to be looking at another bear trend. Once we get a bear trend, the bears will have all of the momentum and it'll be very simple for them to short at resistance knowing that they have all of the momentum and the benefit of the trend. So this is time to be getting a lot more defensive if we start closing below 334 and then you're going to be looking for the full-blown bear market scenario in the tech sector. In the Dow Jones, we were down 1.09% today and the Dow Jones was looking extremely bullish in the morning with that very strong gap up open above the resistance at 353, which was going to be another daily higher high. And all we needed to see for the Dow Jones was a confirmed breakout by holding above support at 349 and as you can tell from the chart this is now looking like a false breakout so this is not something we can completely ignore we got the breakout for one day but we didn't get the second day of follow-through and we're all the way back down to the positively sloping 20 simple moving average of support at 347 so yes we are still at support but we do have the false breakout look so we can't completely ignore that so for that reason you can still be bullish on the dow jones above 347 and above 346 but if we lose those support levels, it's very likely we're coming down to test this critical support at 340. So for the Dow Jones, critical support, watch 347 and 346. And if those levels fail, you're looking for a test of 340. And below 340, we're looking a lot more bearish for the retest of 333 and possibly even lower. Now, if we do start to bounce and get that breakout back above 350, that will still be bullish price action. So another break above 350 will be bullish, but we really want to see that daily close at a higher high with a close above 353. And that should confirm that this is going into the full bull trend and we're going up there to close the gap at 360 and more than likely testing the previous all-time highs. So even though the Dow Jones did have a very bearish engulfing day, it is still looking relatively strong compared to the rest of the market. And it is the only index that is close to having the bull trend. So follow the Dow Jones as a leading indicator. On the Russell 2000 small caps, we were down 2.24% today and again another bearish engulfing candle and getting rejected above that resistance level at 203. So at this point, it's very likely we're coming down to fill the gap at 195.7. And if that level of support fails, you're looking for a retest of the lows around 193 to 191. And below 191, you're looking for the continuation of the bear market as we trend lower. Bullish breakouts for the IWM will be above 203 closing above 208, and we should be back in the full bull market by the time we close above 212. So watch those three critical resistance levels. On the RK ETF, we were down about 5% today, and we did close the gap to the downside at 54.7 and broke right through that level and continued to go lower. So at this point, it looks like the RK ETF will be retesting the lows around 52 and possibly even making a brand new 52 week low at this price target at $50. If we fail to hold $50, that will be extremely bearish, which is not surprising because this has been in a bear market for quite some time. If we lose that $50 support, we'll likely start trending down towards $40, but it is very likely we could see a strong bounce off of these support levels because we did fill the gap and we still have this gap all the way up here at 66. So on the way to fill the gap to the upside, if we do start to bounce, you're looking for resistance right around 60 and our 20 simple moving average right around 63. On the VIX, we were up 11.62% today with the VIX spiking out back above 22, even though it did look like the VIX was starting to break down below 20. The VIX clearly found support at that level and volatility is back as we start to sell off. So remember, this is going to be a volatile whipsaw between 20 and 24, and we're getting bullish when the VIX is below 20, and we're getting very cautious and very bearish if the VIX starts breaking above 24. So watch this range between 20 and 24, and that will help you decide which direction the market is likely trending. On Bitcoin, we're currently down 1.4% today, and Bitcoin did get rejected at that level at 42,000, and intraday it was even trading as high as 43,000. 
At this point, with the rejection at resistance, it is not looking bullish, and we're only one day away from having the full bear trend. So at this point, it's likely Bitcoin is going to come back down and test the support level at 37,000, but we can't completely ignore the fact that it does have support at 39,000. So watch for support at 39,000, but don't forget it's likely we're trending down lower towards 37,000, so don't necessarily expect that support level to hold up. We can get more bullish if we start closing above 42,000, but right now this is looking like a clear rejection at resistance, which means we should be expecting lower prices. If we do get a breakout above 42,000, you're looking for the next strong resistance right here at 45,000. On Nvidia stock, we were down 6.05% today, and Nvidia continues to get rejected at that resistance level at 223, and today it did lose that strong support level at 209. So below 209, it's likely we're coming all the way down to retest the lows at 197. And if we lose that support level, we could be coming all the way back down to 190. This is looking very impulsive to the downside. And as you can tell, we did form a new daily lower low. So it's very likely Nvidia is heading into a bear market, but we don't know for sure until we see the confirmation of the bounce, rejection at resistance, and continue lower. So at this point, it is likely we're going to get the dead cat bounce off of one of these support levels which could take us all the way back up to fill the gap at 230 and possibly even test resistance at 244. So even though we are getting bearish on Nvidia, don't rule out the possibility it needs a counter trend rally before it can see any more downside. We do have earnings coming up, but it's about a month out, so there's not going to be any catalyst from earnings in the near future. So look for the potential of a bounce off support, but don't get overly bullish on something that's so close to a bear trend, so don't be going long-term swings on something that could be trending lower. On Tesla stock, we were up 3.23% today, and Tesla also had a very bearish looking candle, going up there to close the gap at 1087 and finding resistance at the gap fill and selling off and coming all the way back down below the 20 simple moving average. So in order for this to look bullish, we would have liked to see this price action hold up above this 20 simple moving average and find support at 1041, but we did not see that even though we are still making a relatively higher low this is not a candle that you want to look at if you're getting bullish so on tesla stock you need to watch this very critical support level at 975 because if that level breaks down we're coming back down to 937 and if that level fails we're coming back down to 900 and below 900 we're likely going to see the bear market scenario so there's three critical levels of support below, and you're getting a lot more bullish if we can start closing above 1041. If we do get the bullish breakout, you still have resistance at 1065 and 1087, and the confirmation that we're going to retest all-time highs will be the time we break out above 1145. On Apple stock, we were down about a half a percent today, and Apple did get rejected at that resistance level right around 171, and did close back down below 168. So intraday, even though we did have bullish price action, we did get the bearish close, so it does look likely that we could come back down to retest support at 165. We can get more bullish when we start closing above 168 and we'll likely get the gap close at 174 once we start seeing that bullish price action. Otherwise, look for support at 165 and 162 and the full blown correction if we start to close below 162. On the financials, we were down 1.58% today, getting rejected at the 50 EMA and slicing back down through support at 37.5 and developing the full bear trend. So we're very close to seeing the financial sector heading into a bear trend if we do lose this support trend line. On the industrials, we were down 1.02% today, closing back down below the 50 EMA, but still finding support above the 5 EMA. If we can bounce from here, it's still possible that we go up there to close the gap at 106, but get a lot more cautious if we continue to close below the 50 EMA. On the healthcare sector, we were down 1.1% today, finding support at the 20 simple moving average and still holding on to the bull trend. So there's no way we know that this is rolling over and getting ready to die until we see price action slicing through support. On the energy sector, we were down 3.17% today and the energy sector is finally looking like it's getting rejected from this price target and coming all the way back down to the 20 simple moving average. If the energy sector starts closing below this support level, we'll likely lose the bull trend, which could send the energy sector into a correction. So jumping back over the S&P 500, we are testing very critical levels at both resistance and support, and we're going to know very soon whether we're heading into a bear market scenario or getting the final steps of a bear trap before we go right back into a bull market. The market could go in any direction from these levels, so make sure you're following the price action. If we bounce off support and start breaking through resistance, you need to get a lot more bullish. And if we slice through these support levels and continue lower, you instantly need to get a lot more bearish. These support levels could be pivots between a bear market and a bull market scenario. So take them seriously and make sure you follow the price action because the price action cannot lie to you. If we bounce off support and break through resistance, that is bullish no matter what else is going on. And if we slice down through support and continue to see high volume selling, 
That is bearish and you need to take it seriously. So follow the price action at these critical levels and make sure you know what you're going to do whether we get the bearish breakdown or the bullish breakout. Also, don't forget that I have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm-driven trade alert service that only trades the ETF TQQ and sends all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message. With all of this market volatility, I think now is the best time to be a bank member. You can find out all the information and learn how to join by clicking on the link in the description of the video. I also have the Stocks Channel Discord where I do intraday updates and analysis and bring new trade ideas to you weekly. If you're interested in joining the Stocks Channel Discord server, you can find out how to join by clicking on the link below. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.